H-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with my wonderful one, Let's Dance. Here's a dessert, ladies and gentlemen, that's just as gay as a morning in May. Yes, you're right. It's Jell-O. Rich, radiant Jell-O, a brilliant dessert that brightens up the table like a bowl of gay spring flowers. Jell-O is truly a delight to the eye and an inspiration to every appetite. Even the simplest meals take on a special attraction, become a real feast of flavor when there's a big dish of shimmering Jell-O for dessert. No matter which one of Jell-O's six glowing colors you choose, you'll have a dessert that looks like a million. And no matter which one of Jell-O's six delicious flavors you select, you're in for a lot of swell, satisfying refreshment. Jell-O is simply full of extra-rich flavor, as tempting as the juicy, ripe fruit itself. So enjoy some real soon. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O, and be sure to look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells a treat. My wonderful one, Let's Dance, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our program tonight, we're going to reenact the events which occurred on our recent airplane trip from New York to Los Angeles. The time is last Monday morning, and as the scene opens, a taxi cab carrying Jack and Mary is approaching the New York Municipal Airport on Long Island. Well, Mary, we sure had a lot of fun in New York, didn't we? Shows, nightclubs, and everything. I'll bet it was pretty expensive, eh, Jack? All right, so it ran into money. But who cares? And how often do I go to New York? How often do I get on a spree? How often does Paramount pay your expenses? <laughs> I don't care. I still feel like a playboy. That's you, a nice, on-the-cuff playboy. Anyway, I had fun. Hey, driver, step on it, will you? I don't want to miss the plane. Your wish is my command. <laughs> well... Polite fellow, isn't he? Oh, boy, wait till Paramount sees your expense account. Mary, there's nothing wrong with it. Here it is right here, itemized and everything. Look, meals, room, tips, taxi cabs, it's all legitimate. How are you going to explain this item? Blue suit, $85. I bought that suit to make a personal appearance at the Paramount Theater. I wore it on the stage and everybody saw it. Underwear, four fifty. What did you do, a strip tease? <laughs> Mary, let Paramount worry about my underwear, will you? And driver, a little faster, please. We want to get there. It is yours to request, mine to obey. <laughs> well, thanks. My, isn't he formal? Say, Jack, what's this on your list? Tips, $18. Gratuity, 37 well, What's wrong with that? They mean the same thing. They do not. Tips is dimes, and gratuities is from a quarter up. <laughs> so mind your own business. Gee, look what time it is. Well, jeepers creepers, this tops everything. Now what? Shoelaces, five cents. <laughs> Give me that list. You're not supposed to see it anyway. Hey, driver, that's the airport right ahead, isn't it? It's mine to drive, yours to point out. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> yep, that's the airport, all right. Wow, look at all those planes. Yeah, just think, 18 hours and we'll be in California. You know, Mary, the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth wonder of the world. Unquote. I read the folder, too. <laughs> well, it's very impressive. Well, here we are. I hope the rest of the gang are here. How much do I owe you, driver? That'll be two dollars. Two dollars. Here you are. And, oh, yes, uh, here's a tip for you. Couldn't you make that a gratuity? <laughs> All right, here's a quarter. Goodbye, driver. Goodbye. If you like me, tell your friends. If not, tell it to Sweeney. <laughs> 16,000 cab drivers in New York, and I have to get a philosopher. <laughs> Come on, Mary. The others are probably inside. Here comes Don Wilson now. Where? Oh, yes, and Dennis is with him. Hey, fellas. Well, hello, hello Jack. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hey, well, Dennis, a few minutes more, and we'll all be flying back to California. 
Are you thrilled? I'll say. But you know, Mr. Benny, I've never flown before. Is it scary? No, there's nothing to it. I love it. What are you talking about? You've never been up in a plane before in your life. I've never been up in a plane? No. Then how come in Waukegan they used to call me Wings Benny? <laughs> That's because your shoulder blade stuck out. <laughs> Oh, sister, are you pressing? <laughs> now, where's Rochester with the luggage? Maybe he's in the waiting room. Yeah, let's go in. Come along, Dennis. Say, hey, Jack, did you have any trouble persuading Rochester to fly? Well, he was pretty scared, Don, but I finally convinced him that the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth wonder of the world. That sold him. See, it's a beautiful station, isn't it, Mary? Yeah, I'm going over to get a magazine. Okay. Bring me a couple of cigars. You want those stinkers or is Caramont paying for them? <laughs> Never mind. Get good ones. Attention, please. TWA Flight 9, the Sky Chief to Los Angeles, now loading at gate number 10. All aboard, please. You hear that? They're loading the plane and Rochester isn't even here yet. We don't have to worry about Phil Harris. There he is over there. Oh, yeah. And look at that beautiful girl with him. Yeah. That's for me. Dennis, come back here. Well, I'll go over and get Phil. Be right back, fellas. Well, we'll be shoving off pretty soon, honey. Gosh, I hate to leave you. Gee, Philby, I'll be so lonesome without you. Sure had a lot of fun these last couple of weeks, huh, sugar? It's been heavenly. Oh, hello, Phil. I didn't see you. Hiya, Jackson. You all set to leave? Yep. And, well, who's this gorgeous creature? Oh, uh, pardon me. Jackson, I'd like you to meet Miss, uh, uh, Miss, uh... Oh, fine. <laughs> Some romance. What is your name, honey? Minnie Jerkfinkel. <laughs> Jerkfinkel? Yes, my brother Logan is one of your most... Most ardent fans, I know. I know I met him. Well, it's a pleasure, Miss Jerkfinkel. Give my regards to your brother. Come on, Phil, we gotta get going. Goodbye, Philzy. So long, see you next year, uh, uh... Minnie, uh, Minnie. Uh... <laughs> Hey, that's a good-looking girl, Phil. Where'd you meet her? My guitar player introduced her to me. Oh. Well, how did he meet her? I pointed her out to him. <laughs> oh, the old one, too, eh? You know, Phil, if you... Well, look who's here. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Rochester. Have you got the luggage weighed and everything? Uh-huh. Well, then, come on. Let's get on the plane. You know, boss, I've been pounding on this, and I think I'll go by train. What do you mean? You take the high road, and I'll take the low road. <laughs> And I'll be in Los Angeles behind you. Now, Rochester, don't be such a coward. Why, flying today is wonderful. It's just as safe as walking down the street. In fact, it's safer. Boss, you're talking to a man that comes from a long line of Pullman porters. I'm not going to argue with you. You want to go back to Hollywood, don't you? Yes, but I don't want to ride on nothing where there's nothing under it. Oh, Rochester, you're silly. Flying is the greatest thing in the world. Did you ever see a bird that wasn't happy? Well, the day I wake up with feathers on, I'll try it. <laughs> Listen, Rochester, I've told you a thousand times that the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable... Okay, let's go. <laughs> More like it. Come on. Here's your cigar, Jack. Thanks. What's that you got there? It's a movie magazine. It's got your picture on the cover. Let's see that. Oh, yeah. In color, too. See, my, my eyes sure look blue, don't they? Hey, fellas, look at this magazine with my picture on it. Oh, Jack, take it easy. I'm going over to get a few more copies of this. Attention, please. TWA Sky Chief, Flight 9, leaving immediately. All aboard. Hurry up, Jack. Never mind the magazine. Yeah, the heck with them. The heck with them, nothing. It'll only take a second. Hey, young fella, give me a half a dozen copies of that magazine with my picture on it. Take a dozen. They ain't selling. <laughs> All right, give me all of them. Here's your money. Come on, Jack. The plane's ready to leave. I'm coming. Here, Rochester, take these magazines. Are you sure you want me to go with you, boss? Yes, get going. Okay. Doggone, if this plane is eighth wonder, I'm the ninth for getting on it. And stop talking to yourself. Come on, Jack. We're coming. We're coming. <laughs>
Isn't this marvelous up here? Hey, Mary, see the airport way down there? Yeah, it sure looks small, doesn't it? Yep. How do you feel, Dennis? Oh, boy, this is fun. It sure is. Hey, Rochester, look at the airport way, way down there. Describe it to me. I ain't looking. <laughs> what a baby. Jack, we're flying over the East River now. Look at the skyline of New York below us. Oh, yeah. Isn't that thrilling? Rochester, look at that skyline. Boss, please. <laughs> Open your eyes. Hey, Phil! Phil! What do you want, Jackson? Excuse me a minute, honey. Honey? <laughs> a fine way to talk to the air hostess. You don't even know her. I don't, huh? Her name is Miss Rutherford. She's single, comes from Texas, hasn't got a steady boyfriend, and what am I waiting for? You've only been on this plane two minutes. She is pretty, though. That's for me! Oh, you and your that's for me! <laughs> Say, Jack. What? We're up in the air now. Why don't you unstrap your safety belt? Because you're not supposed to. I'm not taking this belt off until we get to Los Angeles. That's the rule. Why, well, Jack, you're only supposed to strap yourself when the plane takes off and when it lands. Don, you're not talking to a greenhorn. I've been up before. Go on, you haven't been up in the air since you played Little Eva in Uncle Tom's cabin. <laughs> it wasn't me, that was my sister Florence. I played a bloodhound in that. And I got a blue ribbon, too. <laughs> well, well, is everybody comfortable up here? How are you, Mr. Benny? Oh, I'm fine, Miss Rutherford. Just fine. You know, Mr. Benny, you can unstrap your belt now. Oh. 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 Have they changed the rules? You see, in the old days, when I was a test pilot, uh, we used to stay uh, strapped in all the time. Oh. Were you a test pilot? Yes. You used to try out pitchforks in a livery stable. <laughs> Mary, will you stop... Will you stop dreaming things up? Oh, Miss Rutherford, my ears have been buzzing a little bit. Is that on account of the altitude? Yes. That's caused by air pressure on the eardrum. Now, just swallow real hard and you'll be all right. Oh, okay. Oh? <laughs> there, that did it. Thanks. Well, Mr. Benny, my ears are buzzing, too. Well, just swallow, Dennis, like I did. Go ahead, real hard. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Dennis, you ought to have your skull x-rayed sometime. I think there's something wrong there. Oh, uh, miss, when are we going to have lunch? Right after we leave Chicago, Mr. Wilson. Well, thank you. We just had breakfast. Oh, Miss Rutherford, would you adjust my seat for me, please? I want to sit back and relax. Why, certainly. There you are. Thanks. No, we seem to be climbing higher all the time. Oh. <laughs> There I go again. Me too. I wonder what does that. Just think. Five hours ago we were in New York and now we're pulling out of Chicago. Say, Jack, look at that little old lady that just got on. Oh, yes. She's reading that movie magazine with your picture on the cover. She is? Well, um, pardon me, madam. You know, that's my picture there on the cover. Eh? I said that's my picture on the cover. They sure touched it up, didn't they? <laughs> well, a little, but I think it's a good likeness. Hey, Rochester, you feel better now? Oh, I feel fine, boss. Good. How about playing a game of casino? I left the cards at home. Well, what of it? We can get a deck of cards from the hostess. I can't win with them. <laughs> oh, ho! So that's it. Well, Rochester, that $9,000 I owe you is automatically canceled. Oh, well, Mr. Benny, if you look out of the window now, you'll notice that we're passing over Waukegan. Waukegan? Oh, boy! Everybody stop reading and look out the window! Hey, Phil, look at Waukegan. Don't bother me. I'm doing a crossword puzzle. Look, Mary, there's the city hall. Oh, yeah, I see the dome. Well, I'll be darned. There's Mayor Talcott sitting on the flagpole. <laughs> hey, Bidey! Hiya, Jack. <laughs> Gee, he must have known I was going to pass through. Do you recognize everything, Mr. Benny? Sure, there's the Waukegan Hotel. There's Genesee Street. And there's my father's clothing store. And there's your father out on the sidewalk wrestling with a customer. <laughs> he is not. He waits until they get in the store. What's all the rumpus 
this young man? We just passed over my hometown, Waukegan. I was born there. Eh? I said I was born there. They sure touched it up, didn't they? <laughs> oh, forget it. Gee, that was a thrill. Hey, Jackson. What? What's a three-letter word meaning opposite of woman? Man. M-A-N. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, Mary, he's been working that crossword puzzle ever since we left New York. Miss Rutherford, uh, we're going to have lunch pretty soon? In just a minute, Mr. Wilson. Oh, thank you. Uh, pardon me, young man. Are you John Wilson, the radio announcer? That's right, madam, and I broadcast for Jell-O. Eh? Jell-O. Go to your neighborhood grocer and ask him for a package of Jell-O. What's that you sell again? Jell-O, madam. It comes in six delicious flavors, and look for the big red letters on the box. I sure will. Hmm. Don, if I didn't know that lady was a total stranger, I'd swear this was a plug. <laughs> I really would. Hey, Jackson, what? what's a nine-letter word meaning musical organization? Orchestra. Oh, yeah, that was a toughie. <laughs> and he's a musician. Say, Mr. Benny. What is it, Dennis? Well, Sunday is Mother's Day, so I was wondering if I could sing my song now and dedicate it to Miss Rutherford, our hostess. Dedicated to Miss Rutherford? What for? Well, all during this trip, she's been just like a mother to me. Me too. Drat it. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Hey, Jackson, orchestra don't fit. I gotta have a nine-letter word. Well, how many letters do you get out of orchestra? A. O. R. K. I. S. P. Phil! <laughs> Phil, just take your pencil and make the white squares black. <laughs> That's your speed. Sing, Dennis. Okay. And stop swallowing. <laughs> O-R-K-I-S. What a guy. Sometimes in the hush of the evening hour When shadows free from the west I think of the twilight songs you sang And the boy you loved to rest A wee little boy with a tousled head That long, long ago was gone I wonder if sometimes you long for that boy. Oh, little mother of mine. And now Very good, Dennis. Ought to go over swell on the program Sunday. I hope so. Say, Mary, that fried chicken looks pretty good. Give me a bite, will you? Why didn't you order some when we did? I wasn't hungry then. Oh, Miss Rutherford, I'll have a luncheon tray, please. I'll bring it right in, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. 
Who took this magazine and drew a mustache on my picture? <laughs> did you do it, Mary? No, I didn't think of it, darn it. Well, someone did. Did you, Phil? Not me. Was it you, Dennis? No, Mr. Benny. Hmm. Well, who did? I did. You want to make something out of it? <laughs> well, I don't think that's very nice, madam. Hey, Rochester, get an eraser. Get an eraser and remove this mustache from my picture. Okay, boss. Should I uncross your eyes, too? <laughs> yes, and fix up that tooth she blacked out. <laughs> now, go ahead. Why can't Mr. Harris do this and I'll do the puzzle? <laughs> I don't care who does it, but get it done. By the way, Rochester, how do you like flying now? Just fine. You know, boss, I think I'll buy an airplane when I get to California. You better wait till your yacht is paid for. You're the down payingest man I ever saw. <laughs> you buy more things that you can't keep. You're right, boss. I've had everything repossessed but my first wife. I'm not surprised. Here's your soup, Mr. Benny. I'll have your chicken ready in a minute. And some mashed potatoes, please. Gee, isn't this marvelous? Imagine eating soup while sailing through the air at 200 miles an hour. See, just like we were right at home. <laughs> Who pushed me? Nobody pushed you. We just hit an air pocket. Well, get me a towel. I got clam broth all over my blue suit. You mean Paramount's blue suit. I mean, get me a towel. Where's the pilot? We'll watch where he's going. <laughs> now cut that out! <laughs> oh, Miss Rutherford, tell the pilot to watch what he's doing. Now, Mr. Benny, don't be a baby. I'm not a baby. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> now we're pitching. Oh, boy, this is fun. Fun? Gosh, I'm getting so... Are you dizzy, young man? No, I'm all right. I'm fine. What's the trouble, Jack? No trouble at all, Don. I said I'm all right. You look kind of pale, Jack. Are you sick? No, I'm not sick. And what's that you got in your lap? The Davis Cup? <laughs> Mary, this is no time to joke. Now, stop. Here's your fried chicken, Mr. Benny. Oh. <laughs> Later, please. Open that air vent a little more there, Rochester. And put down my chicken. I'll be all right in a few minutes. Okay, boss. I'm sorry. Take the chicken, Rochester. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks, boss. Can I do something for you, Jack? Yeah, stop staring at me. Oh, Mr. Benny, why don't you drink a glass of water and hold your breath? Dennis, holding your breath is for hiccup. That's all you need. Gosh, I can't understand it. I felt so good just a minute ago. And now... Oh! <laughs> Everything happens at once. Wish we were in Los Angeles already. Why, Jack, this is a swell trip. You're the only one that's complaining. I can't help it. I don't feel good. But, Jack, an old test pilot once told me that the oh. modern airplane, winging its way through the all clouds, right, is a veritable right. eighth wonder of the world. That's very interesting. <laughs> now, let me alone. Okay, Wing. Mary, please. Hey, Jackson, how do you spell lobster? Lobster? <laughs> now, cut that out, Phil! <laughs> the heck with your puzzle. How do you feel now, Mr. Benny? Not so good, Miss Rutherford. Well, I'll sit right by you and hold your hand. Gee, thanks. You know, you're awfully sweet to me. Now, just relax, Mr. Benny, and I'll stroke your forehead. Ah. Look at the big movie star. Let me alone, Mary. Gee, Miss Rutherford, your hand is so soothing and so cool. So cool. <laughs> And it's so cool. So cool. Thanks, boss. <laughs> Rochester. Where's Miss Rutherford? Where's everybody? They got off the plane. We've landed. 
Oh, my goodness. You mean we're in Los Angeles? Sure, boss. Let's go. Well, gee, we're here already. And I feel swell. Rochester, wrap up that fried chicken. I'll eat it on the way home. Okay. Don't wrap it in my picture. <laughs> Boy, just think. 18 hours from New York to Los Angeles. You know, Rochester, the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> it sure is, boss. It sure is. <laughs> And now, let me tell you about one quick, easy way to answer that day-after-day question of what shall we have for dessert. Now, here's the whole trick. Tomorrow, ask your grocer for a box of strawberries and some lemon or orange jello. Then when dinner time comes, surprise and delight the family with a swell new jello dessert, jello cubes with strawberries. Well, the very name tells you here's something that's going to be mighty easy to eat, and it's just as easy to make. All you do is first prepare one package of lemon or orange jello in the usual way and turn it into a pan to chill. Now, when it's firm, cut into cubes and arrange these cubes in sherbet glasses along with sweetened sliced strawberries. Then serve it either plain or with cream, and believe me, the smiles around the table will be just as bright as this gay Jell-O dessert itself. Yes, for full, rich flavor and tempting appearance, Jell-O cubes with strawberries certainly rates for the best. So, friends, try this new Jell-O creation tomorrow. Juicy crimson strawberries, sliced and sweetened, and mingled with tiny glistening cubes of bright lemon or orange Jell-O. It's a grand dessert. Quick and easy to make, a joy to look at, and downright delicious. This is the last number of the 30-second program in the current Jell-O series. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood, California. Before saying goodnight, I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to mothers everywhere. Oh, Mary, did you send your mother a wire? Yes, I sent her a wire, some flowers, a box of candy, and a check. How much was the check? You'll find out. Good night, folks. Oh. Be sure to listen to the Aldrich family heard in most communities every Tuesday night. Consult your local newspaper or movie or radio guide magazine for the day and exact time of the Aldrich family. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>